In this video we will focus on the criteria page. We have already discussed the purpose of the criteria page, which is to add criteria on which our searches will be based. At the moment you can see a single line of criteria shown here. Let's break this down. First we have the data type, where we choose the high level area we want to query. The next field is the data subtype, and the values here will differ depending on which data type was chosen. The purpose of this drop down is to choose the actual value we want to search against. In my example, I'm searching for a specific case based on a family number. Next, we have the operator value, which defines the manner in which we search with the value the user enters. If I click on the drop down, I can see we have several options available to us. First up is the equal symbol. And when chosen, this searches for an exact match. An example is that I want to search for a specific family number, so an exact match. Then I will add my family number here. Next we have the not equal to. So on this same criteria, if I change this to not equal to, I will omit family number 2199 and return all other cases. So, it will not return case number 2199, but it will return all other cases in my system. Do you see the difference that just this one value makes to your result set? The exist and not exist fields work on whether a data field has a value in it or not. I need a report that shows how many of our cases has an application date entered. I then need to choose exist. Does the application date exist? If yes, return the result. Perhaps I want cases where no application date has been entered. If so, I change this to not exist. Next we have our greater than and greater than or equal to operators. These are specific to number values and date values. The greater than operator will return records with a value greater than the one entered by the user. In my example, I can change the application date to be greater than today. All cases with an application date greater than today will then show. The greater than or equal to works exactly the same but will include the entered value in the search. All cases with an application date greater than today and including today will then show. The same then applies to the next two operators, the less than or less than and equal to. These work the same as the above, but checks values that are less than what the user entered. So let's add a second line to my criteria. I do this by clicking on the button Add Row. A new line for criteria has now appeared. Let's limit our search for application dates to only specific case types. I will choose case data and then case type. This means our user can now enter both of these values to get the desired result. Always take care on the operator chosen as this will affect the results returned. Before we continue, we need to look at the block called AND slash OR. Let's discuss what this means. First, whenever you see this, know that this affects how the next criteria line will be interpreted when the query runs. All new lines will default to the word AND. If I add a new line, I can see this. Why? Let's read the criteria out to make sense of it. The query reads, Provide me with all case types where the application date is greater than X AND where the case type is equal to Y. So the AND keyword will return the results where all of the conditions listed as criteria are true. This might seem obvious, but why is this important? We discuss this in detail so that you can better understand the next option. Click on the drop down and notice the word OR. Select this keyword instead. Now this significantly changed our results. We are now asking the following. Provide me all cases where the application date is X or where the case type is Y. Big difference in how this syntax is read. Using the OR operator, the query will display results if any of the conditions listed are true. 
We can of course combine the AND slash OR conditions to create even more complex SQL statements. If we do use both AND and OR in our query, we need to talk about grouping data. In most instances, when you are working with both AND as well as OR, you need to group data. Grouping data allows your query to make sense when the query executes. Let's look at my example. Here I have two sets of name numbers and name types. I want to search for a specific name number as a name type or another name number as a name type. We can apply grouping to these criteria as good practice. To group text, select the text in the search group area and click on create. Take note that the numbers here correspond with the row numbers shown here. So I have grouped line one and two displayed with the brackets, which matches the rows here. Next, we will look at the tick box called multiple selections. This tick box allows you to add multiple selections of a specific type of criteria. Here we can add multiple entries against a specific data type. So I have a report that displays cases for a specific country. When this report is run, the user can only select one country from the dropdown. What if I want my report to search on multiple countries? Of course, I can add additional rows or several additional rows and also select country there, but it is not the best way to do it. Simply click on the multiple tick box and the user can then add several countries to the criteria by clicking on the plus icon. Lastly, click here to access the name criteria area. This we use in conjunction with name reports. All aspects discussed in this video also applies to the name criteria area.